What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Sean. If you haven't watched my first video, go watch the first video first because there's still some good stuff in there. But today, I'm trying to make this interesting for you all, you guys, so it doesn't sound like you're in a classroom, but uh, that's what all this is about. You gotta learn. You gotta learn the Word of God. You gotta learn so you can fight your enemy. You can com combat all the people who think they're smart. Uh, and show them the real word. Uh, today, I'd like to start with John 1, chapter 1, verse 1, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Before I go any further, I would like to start at the actual beginning, where um, God created everything. Uh Throughout our whole lives, we are taught about the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution. We get so caught up in what they teach us that we don't even question what they feed our minds. We don't ask, uh, ask them for the proof. Uh, these two theories are always going to be that, just theories. Because they cannot be proven or tested by the scientific theory. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, I am here today, though, to tell you the biblical perspective of, of the beginning of the universe. And how science actually ties into it. All the books I quote today will uh, be in the description below so that... Anyone who wants to read them for more info can look them up, buy them, and read them. In, in the book, when the skeptics ask a uh, handbook on Christian evidences, uh, it, it talks about what or, origin science actually means. Uh, it says, origin science is not just another name for uh, giving ev evidence to support creationism. It is a different uh, kind of science. Origin science studies past singularities rather than present normalities. It studies things that only happen once and by nature don't happen again and won't happen again. Hopefully, we all know how the world was created in the Bible. If you don't, here's a quick overview. Now, day, on day one, obviously, um, God created the earth. He created light, and he created the waters upon the earth. Uh, we also, there's estimating when the angels were actually created... Uh, the only reason why, um, from what I have studied and what I've been told, uh, the, the reason why we believe that uh, the angels were created around the first day was because in the scripture, Job 38, uh, four, uh, verse 4 and verse 7, which says, Wherefore you... When I uh, where where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. And then later in verse seven it says, "When the morning star, uh, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy." Uh, the word the words um, the phrase "sons of God" uh, in Hebrew actually translate to meaning the angels. Uh, in day two, uh, Genesis, uh, the verses six through eight, God divided the waters from, from above and below the firmament. Firmament actually means the sky, the heavens, and the expanse, which means space. Uh, there is a theory out there um, 
if you want to list them, um, there's a guy named Kent Hovind. He talks about this theory a lot. And he talks about creationism and evolution. But uh, there is a belief that there were um, water above the atmosphere and below the earth. And that's how we have the Andrea, I think it's called the Andreas Fault and everything. But it created kind of like a hyperbaric chamber. Uh, and when in a hyperbaric chamber, the, uh, the, the oxygen is more pure and pressurized, which create, um, could get things to grow a lot more, uh, a lot bigger. Uh, um, that's how we get the, the, how we could get the age of man being longer in that time span. Uh, and that was before the flood. Uh, I'm not going to get too into that. Uh, that could be for another video, but when I actually talk about the flood, but that could also be how we had giants back in those days. And I don't mean the giants from the fantasy movies like the Lord of the Rings and Jack and the Beanstalk. Just, uh, we're talking about the really tall guys. There was actually um, one of the articles he actually talks about uh, there's an article he talks about where a bunch of archaeologists actually find a real um, a 12 foot, I believe, uh, skeleton, uh, man, uh, human skeleton, uh, in the Indi Indian burial grounds or something like that. Uh, you'll have to go watch his videos. He's more of an expert than I am on this stuff. Uh, on day three, which is verses th uh, nine through 13. Uh, God created the, uh, made the dry land appear, the, sea, the seas gathered together, and the grass and trees and all the plants were made. And day, day four, which is four, uh, verses 14 through 19, uh, the light on the firmament uh, was, uh, had the ability to give light on the earth. Uh, and he, uh, the... See, the seasons were created, and the moon and the stars were also created. Uh, day five was verses 20 through 23, uh, which was all the sea creatures, uh, meaning like the whales, the all the fish, and all that were created, and the birds were created on the third day. Not, no, fifth day, my bad. Fifth day. And on the sixth day, all the land animals were made, and man and woman were made on the sixth day. You see, there is... Um, now, stopping there, because we're talking about humans right at the second, there is a difference between... There is a difference between a man and a woman. Many difference, in fact through the body parts or the lack thereof, um, but also through psychological uh, differences. Men tend to be more territorial. Also, we can uh, go into a state of thinking where we literally think about nothing. Uh, women don't understand because they think about everything as if uh, it is connected like one big ball of yarn. Don't get offended, but that's how it works. Uh, I've read the articles and psychologists say and talk about this all the time. Uh, it is how they uh, women remember everything and men can't. So how do we know there is a beginning? First of all, the Bible, the Bible tells us, and uh, it's the inerrant word of God, so it, it, that's basically our history book. The, the Bible is one huge history book that actually gives you guidance on how to live and uh, what not to do. Uh, Albert Einstein, uh, he actually at first believed that... Um, the universe was eternal. Like, there was no start to it. It just 
Um, it's just been going on, and that's just how it was. And he kept trying to prove that. But in 1916, um, he came up with the general relativity theory, uh, which uh, was proven by Arthur Addington and Willi uh, Willem de Sitter and Edwin Hubble. Uh, Einstein believed in a pantheistic God, but said that creation and divine thought was better described as a theistic odd. Uh, now, the theory that he, uh, he created uh, proved that with his uh, equation and everything that the earth had to start at some point. And he, it actually got him really angry that it actually helped prove that there, there was God, that it was created. Uh, Edwin Hubble created the 100-inch telescope, discovered a red shift in the light uh, from every observable galaxy, which meant that those galaxies were moving away from us. Uh, this no longer supported the wish of eternal universe. Uh, what that, uh, what it what it means by it's moving away is the earth, um, the universe is expanding and things are moving away from each other. So at one point in time, there had to be a single point where everything was created. In the book, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist, which they're trying to support... Um, support what you call the Big Bang Theory in a way. Uh, it says, how does the expanding universe prove the beginning? Think about it this way. We could watch a video recording of the universe, of uh, the history of the universe, and reverse it. Uh, reversing it, we would see all the matter of the universe collapsed back into one point. Not, not the size of a basketball, not the size of a golf ball, not even the size of a pinhead, but mathematically and logically to a point that is actually nothing. No space, no time, no matter. In other words, once there was n nothing, and then bang, there was something. The entire universe exploded into being. This, of course, is commonly called as the Big Bang Theory. Now, what's funny is they're, they're on point where they need to go, but um, the way they get, go about it, it, they're not quite there. Because, like he said, there was no space, no time, no matter. At once there was nothing, and then there was something. In the beginning, God spoke thing, um, the universe into existence. That's how we get our six days of creation. Um, it took time. Uh, it took matter. You can't just create um, everything out of nothing unless you are a creator. Unless you have the power to create those things. Um, there is uh, there is radiation from the Big Bang still out there amidst temperature all over the place. It was discovered by accident in 1965 by Arno Penzias. It's hard to pronounce his name. Uh, I know that uh, that was put in the book also. Um, the radiation, imagine if you were God and you had all this power and it took you, it probably didn't even take, him, take that much power, but it, it took enough power that it showed there were evidence from him using his power to create such a big universe. Uh, 
an, another quote from it said, uh, no explanation. Uh, this was actually from Robert Jastrow. No, no explanation other than the Big Bang has, uh, has been found for the fireball radiation. The clincher, which has convinced almost the last doubting Thomas, is that the radiation discovered by Panzeus and Wilson has exactly the pattern and wavelength expected for light and heat to produce in a greater explosion. Supporters of the uh, steady state theory have tried desperately to find an alternative explanation. But they have failed. At the present time, the Big Bang Theory has no competitors. Which they're wrong, but they're, like I said, they keep looking in the wrong area. They keep looking for a scientific... And it's not wrong. It's not bad to to think scientifically, but to think of it by the way they are, that there is no God, so how can... Huh, how can we prove that uh, this was created... Just the way we want it. If you want to think of the Big Bang in a godly way, the only way you can say is his voice was loud enough to create an explosion and every, uh, everything was created. But he still, he still wanted to create it in a certain form, in a certain way. So he did it over the period of six days. The what? Oh. Um, from that same book it says the overwhelming evidence for the Big Bang and, con consistent, and consistency with the biblical account and Genesis led Jestro to observe in an interview astronomers now find that they have painted themselves into a corner because they have proven by their own methods that the world began abruptly in an act of creation to which you can trace the seeds of every star, every planet, every living thing in the cosmos and on earth. And they have found that all these things happen as a product of forces that cannot, they cannot hope to discover that there are what I or anyone would call supernatural forces at, at work is now. And I think is scientifically proven fact. See, even he thinks that there had to be some creator to do this. It had to be supernatural. It is a scientific proven fact that the world was created. The universe was created. As you can see from some of these sciences. Uh, <laughs> seriously. As you can see from these sciences. It is an act of creation. There had to be a divine being doing this. We have a creator. Some people are just too hard headed to accept it. With the amazing power God has, it can be understandable to see the evidence and how powerful he is. Other than the miracles, signs, and wonders that he leaves us every day. Even though gra gravity says it all. Even with all this, gravity says it all. It is said if we had a 1% one, 1 more gravitational pull that we would be crushed by our own weight. If we, if we had 1% less, we would end up floating away. Everything would end up floating. Um, we could not stay attached to the ground. I know it's a lot for you to process this. I hope you understood 
all of what what I said here today. And later down the road, I'm thinking of doing a deeper video uh, on evolution and creation. For now, I will direct you to someone who can explain it a lot better than I can. And a lot more interesting. I hope this was interesting enough and I hope you come watch more of my videos. I promise they won't always be so, um, as much information as I've given you today. Um, I hope you have a great day. And I hope the Lord blesses you. Uh, uh, I will be posting my uh, if you have any questions uh, for me to explain this I'm a little bit better I didn't want to do too long a video uh, just email me uh, snapchat me and message me on it or message me on Instagram uh, I will be happy to answer more questions and talk with you more about this I hope you have a great day subscribe and tell all your friends see ya